oh, this is not going to work. Hi, let's talk a little bit about circular motion. And so there's a couple of different ways things can go around in a circle. And one of them is rotation. If something's rotating, then you can substitute the word spinning in there. And that means the axis of rotation is actually inside the object. Another one we can do is revolution. Now in physics, revolution is not an armed conflict against the government. It's actually where the axis is outside the object. So for an example, how long does it take the earth to rotate? Well, rotation would be the earth just turning this way. So that is one day. But a revolution, would, since the axis is outside the body, that means the, the earth is orbiting the sun. And so one year is one revolution of the earth. Now, I keep saying one year or one day, and those are what we call periods. A period is the time needed to complete one of something, one wave from rotation, one revolution, one swing back and forth, one cycle of something, and that's measured in seconds. Now there's a couple of different terms for speed now. Our O term is called linear speed and, or linear velocity. And that's the one that we've always used It's V equals D over T, it's just velocity. And it's simply how fast the object is moving. But since we've got things spinning now, they may stay in the same place, but they're moving really fast. And so we have another type of speed that we call rotational or angular speed. And its symbol is the Greek letter omega. That's the lowercase omega. And it's how much of an angle it rotates or revolves through each second. And its unit is radians per second. Now we're not gonna use angular speed that much, but there is one example I wanna to go to to show you the difference between angular speed and linear speed. I got the earth here and it's rotating. If you can substitute the word spinning in for the action that it's doing, then it's probably rotating. That's where the axis is actually inside the object. A revolution is when the axis is outside the object. So if it, if it was moving around me, then that would be a revolution. So the earth revolves around the sun, it rotates around its axis. So the period of earth rotation is one day, the period of earth revolution is one year. But we also talked about two different types of speed, linear speed and angular speed. So I've got a question for you. So I'll put these tabs up here. We got to put one here, uh, Hudson Bay, up there. We'll put one uh, down near Kentucky, right about there. And we'll put one down here near the equator near Columbia. Okay. The question is, is which one of those spots is moving the fastest? Well, your first question should be, well, what type of speed? If we're talking about angular speed, all three of those spots go around 360 degrees in one day. So they all have the same angular speed. They all go around one rotation in one day. But linear speed is quite different. For linear speed, this one goes around this circle. This one goes around a slightly bigger circle and this one goes around nearly the entire equator. And so since this one actually covers more distance in one day, it has a higher linear speed than this one or this one. This one's actually traveling the slowest linearly, but all three have the same speed angularly. Okay? So the rotational speeds are all the same. The linear speed, the closer you are to the edge, the outer edge, the faster you're moving, the closer you are to the axis, the slower you're moving. We're gonna mostly use linear speed for our calculations if we just do circular motion. And it is just velocity equals distance divided by time. But since we've got something going around a circle, well, the distance around a circle, that's called the circumference. And so if we got the distance going around the circle, we also want to kind of control how many times it goes around a circle. Instead of using generic time, we're gonna use the period. So we've got the distance to go around once, 
and the time to go around once, and that's gonna be our velocity. And so our velocity is gonna be two pi r, the circumference, divided by the period, and that's still measured in meters per second. Well, we need to talk about a couple of terms. And if there's one term that you can eliminate from your vocabulary and actually be smarter is this one right here, centrifugal. There is no such thing. Centrifugal means center fleeing. And when something's spinning, it's not trying to push out. To go around a circle, there's gotta be a force pushing it in. And so that's why we use the word centripetal force center seeking force or centripetal acceleration. What happens is something going around, there's a force pushing in on it to make it go around a circle. See here we have a plate. And notice that as the marble goes around, it can stay in a circle as long as the side of the plate's there because the side of the plate's pushing in on the marble. But as soon as it gets to the point where there's no longer that side there, it goes rolling off in a straight line. So things want to go in a straight line unless they're forced to go in a circle. Well, we've got centripetal acceleration. And centripetal acceleration is the inward acceleration. Remember this acceleration, this force is always towards the center of the circle. And we can calculate that by simply taking the linear velocity, squaring it, and dividing by the radius. And since it is an acceleration, it's still meters per second squared. Centripetal force, F with a little c, centripetal force, that inward force that's making something go around a circle. And we're just gonna solve it by simply F equals MA again. Centripetal force equals mass times centripetal acceleration. But again, remember, centripetal force is not a force on its own. It's a renaming of another force, sort of like um, a tension in a string. Well, if that tension is making an object go around a circle, Tension will be the centripetal force. Gravity keeps the moon in orbit around the Earth. So since the moon's going around a circle, we can say gravity is a centripetal force. The plate is forcing a marble to go around in a circle. So the side of that plate, the normal force from the side of the plate is making the marble go around a circle. So it will be a centripetal force. And there's some demonstrations that we're going to do with that. Got a tennis ball on this end of a string, and if I swing it around, we get it going in a circle. Now, what's causing it to go in a circle is the tension in the string. The string is constantly pulling in and making the ball go around in a circle. Let me stop it. And so, as it goes around, let's go this way. It's the ball's moving this way. It wants to move in a straight line, but I pull in on the string. Now it's going this way. Pull in a string on, again, it's going this way. Pull in on the string on this way, it's going that way. Pull in on the string, it's going this way. So I'm constantly pulling in on the string and that inward force we call centripetal force. It's just a renaming of a different force. The force is actually tension, but because that tension is making the ball move around in a circle, we can call that force a centripetal force. Okay? Centripetal force is just a renaming of another force that's making an object go around in a circle. Okay, now I've got a plate on the end of a string that connects to everything together. And I put something on there and I can get it spinning around and it goes all the way around. It should stay there because what's happening is, is it's moving, I'm pulling in on the plate, always forcing things to go around a circle. So if I try to get things going around, Oh, it stayed on there. But you can't see it very well. Let me see if I can. Be right back. Okay. I need something to hold the cup down. Water will do it. So I've got some water in the cup, and I'll put a little bit of food coloring in there so y'all can see it on the video. And now. If I take that and put it on this, now I should be able, it shouldn't just go flying off like that. Let's see, here we go. Oh, see, it stayed right on there. Now the hard part's stopping it, hold on. Uh, if I let go there, it's gonna go straight up because it's gonna go tangent to the circle. 
It's getting heavy. Uh, if I let go there, it goes flying towards my computer. That's not a good idea. Uh, if I let go here, it goes that way. That's probably the best plan. So here we go. Ha! Okay. It stopped. Now, the reason why the water didn't pour out, the, out at the top is because the water wasn't going that direction. It was going sideways, and the plate was pulling into it, forcing it to stay in the circle. That worked out really well. Let's try it again. Let's see. Aha. Okay, here we go. It even works like this, too. It stays right in there. Again, the hard part's stopping it. So get ready. Catch. All right. Okay. This is a cool little toy. See the blue liquid down there? That is in this container that can spin. And if I connect this pull cord through it, I want you to watch what happens to that fluid. See, all the water ends up at the edge because the water wants to go straight, but it can only go straight so far until it hits the side of the, the container. The side of the container pushes in on the water and forces it to go around the circle. And it will do that as long as this is up to speed. But as soon as it slows down, then gravity wins and all that water goes back into the bottom of the container. That's just like uh, in a washing machine, a top-loading washing machine. All the clothes end up on the side, not because there's a force pushing out. There's no such thing as a force pushing out. Those clothes want to go straight, but they can only go straight until they hit the side of the tub, and the side of the tub forces them around in a, in a curve. And that is why the clothes are all stuck on the side, is because they want to go straight, but the side of the tub pushes in on them and forces them to go around in a circle. Okay? So... There's no such thing as centrifugal force, it's only centripetal force. Always an inward seeking force, inward seeking acceleration. All right, thank you, and tune in for another video where we work out some problems with circular motion.